Allman reporting for Katie Chaz at the 2015-2016 season preview for CBC. I'm here with Chris Haddock. How does it feel to have your show, The Romeo Section, screening on CBC? Uh, well, I'm, I'm fantastic. You, you know, I've, I've had very good, uh, very good results working in partnership with the CBC in the past, and I'm very, I'm very comfortable with it. You know, I just, you know, I, I write my stuff uh, firstly for uh, the Canadian audience. Like mm -hmm. that's just who naturally I, I want to write for, and where I feel that I know probably that you know most about because it's my home. And um, so, I, so the, and I, I've gotten such support from uh, the CBC in the past, and I've had such success, and I, I've learned to become a writer. Um, you know, d doing um, like Da Vinci's Inquest was such a great opportunity for me to plunge into and discover my own voice, and that that they've had the, the, you know the, the network has supported me, and I've done well for them. So it's a great partnership, and it just feels like really comfortable and. You know, a little challenging, you know, at the same time, new people. Absolutely. You know, so. And uh, Da Vinci's Inquest won so many awards. I was looking at it online earlier yeah. and was like, a wow, <laughs> a few, uh, dozens. Um, but this show, The Romeo Section, tell me a little bit about uh, Romeo and Juliet spies yeah. and who these people are. Well, the Romeo and Juliet spies, the term I discovered... Um, I was, uh, you know, I've been sort of interested in the subject of espionage uh, and particularly what they call honey trap sort of a approach where people are seduced by, um, you know, uh, love interests or, or, you know, some kind of intimate, in, intimate intimacies. And they're seduced into becoming um, informants for people or whatever. And I've always found that very intriguing because, possibly because I'm so easily seduced, <laughs> but uh, is, um, is, uh, so I found that kind of a whole a a aspect interesting. And uh, through some of my reading about that kind of uh, historical thing, I'd been reading about Mata Hari and thinking about doing something about Mata Hari, who was an infamous uh, female spy back during uh, World War One, and um, who was executed innocent, by the way, or never, never proven guilty. But um, so I was interested in that, sort of followed that through, and, and, and a couple of things, you know, the affair in Britain that brought, almost brought down the government and stuff like that through... Um, this sort of honey traps, and then I discovered um, that uh, this guy called Marcus Wolf, who had been uh, um, the head of the East German uh, secret police intelligence, um, you know, rep responsible for recruiting the spies, and um, he called. He had he had been recruiting people to become friendly with people in West Germany, generally secretaries who were the secretaries or aides to very important politicians or businessmen or military people. And he called those spies Romeo spies because he'd say, okay, there's the secretary to so-and-so, the Ministry of Defense, and that, you know, he or she seemed very vulnerable, and, and, and they'd study that person, and then they'd send, they'd get a, a, a spy that said, okay, look, you seem to be able, you may like the way you look, or maybe, you know, so let's go try, and they'd try to get encourage, and they'd do this whole, develop this whole ongoing uh, intimate relationship, so that accounts for Romeo spies. Obviously, Romeo spies referring to the, the you know the men who do it, and Juliet to um, Romeo and Juliet. That sounds familiar. Yeah, <laughs> and uh, it's I've had I've had I've had good luck with using familiar names and with Da Vinci. People said, you, you know, you really shouldn't call it Da Vinci's Inquest. I mean, it's like what is that? Well, they were wrong. Yeah, they're clearly wrong. So I mean, and again, you know, it's nice to have a little sort of catchphrase. You know, the Romeo section. People go Romeo. Well, then what's that? Yeah, that sounds like it might be about something, uh, you know, seductive or you know, a Romeo. And uh, I, I also know that the um, that the that the CBC audience is, um, I think, probably uh, interested in that kind of sort of the intimate secrets that people. A hold from each other and we all know that we can be living with somebody mm -hmm. for any amount of time for a long time uh, whether they're in your family or they're or they're your lover or, or, or whatever and you know all the time you don't really know them mm -hmm. you don't really know uh, where they've been they've you know they've said no we was just having drinks with a couple of fellas in the bar lies it's all lies <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> never trust anybody <laughs> and we but the thing is I think we all either have been betrayed mm -hmm have betrayed people and they know what that is and they know how potentially psychologically shattering that can be 
and I'm really interested in the relation because we know that now if we're betrayed at a sort of a, a national level, like maybe you take somebody like Edward uh, Snowden or Julius Assange, and they've been accused of being traitors and betraying their country. And you go, well, yeah, I kind of know what it's like to be betrayed by a, a girlfriend or a boyfriend or, or uh, uh, somebody, a mm -hmm. uh, business partner. And you, you know, that's like, that, 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 that's something that can shake you up. Mm -hmm. And it can kind of really make you lose some or doubt your, your faith in, um, in the uh, goodness. And of humanity. Of humanity. <laughs> So I think that there's a in anyway. So I combine these mm -hmm. these kind of things in the in the show, in the, which is that sort of you know the intimate personal knowledge and questions that we have about people we get involved with, and that some the fact that sometimes these things can um, involve national issues of the betrayal of um, you know ideas or secrets that could have, can affect us. That's so. And where is the best place for us to find out more information on the series online? I guess you'd go to CBC. Uh, uh, but uh, I'm, I'm developing a bunch of stuff. You know, I'm of the mind that there's a certain... You have to... That you should be keeping a little bit back about what the thing's about. Uh, I, I know that... Um, I don't go to see movies sometimes because... I've seen the trailer, and knowing that the trailer contains the best bits of the movie, generally, they don't put in the worst bits. Yeah. They, they really don't. Every, right, every time. You know, they, they, I believe, I've been in the editing room for trailers. You do not put in <laughs> the worst bits. You try to get what's the best thing. And then you see a trailer, and you go, if those are the best bits, I'm not interested. <laughs> yeah. You know, and that may be not true. Yeah. Right, it could be that, you know, actually they're just trying to, somebody else's opinion has been formed or something, maybe the movie's really good. And so I just think that in this day and age, it's kind of like surveillance. Mm -hmm. It's like, you know everything about me and all my tastes and everything like that. No, you don't. Because mm -hmm. <laughs> <laughs> I haven't seen what's out there. I may go for a new product because it's new and you don't know me. So I, it's kind of the whole promotional thing is a little bit like surveillance. Mm -hmm. And, you know, people can really overwork that. I like a little mystery. I, first of all, that's what's intriguing about people. Mm -hmm. Right? If you knew everything about people, I'd be like you. you I'd be like a black fist. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> you know, right? So, yeah, no, I don't, you know, forget about it. I know what's going to happen, and, um, and so I think you know that's that's we're we're intrigued. We're in, in, we're a curious species, mm -hmm. and I think it's it's important that uh, we know that uh, some things. Sometimes our curiosity and our desire to know is being manipulated or shunted away from where the where the ball is really being hidden under which shell you know it's like uh, there's a lot of that going on mm -hmm. and there's a lot of that going on by intimately by people we know uh, there's things that are happening on an international level that um, other people don't want to know that we're being taken advantage of or that perhaps we're taking advantage of somebody else that would be viewed as corrupt or immoral if it was seen transparently um, and if they, again ourselves, if what we were doing was seen as, as uh, you know, as transparent, then uh, our front as being you know good, honest, sincere, moral people would be out the window. And I think sometimes that's a good thing to conceal. Sometimes it's not, you know. And so I'm interested. I just think it's a universal theme. Uh, wrapped up in a really interesting th thriller. Absolutely. Well, thank you so much. Congratulations. And thank I, you I look much. forward to seeing the show. Okay, great. Yeah, I look forward to seeing it too. Thank you. <laughs> I'm Katie Allman reporting for Katie Chats at CBC in Toronto. Thank you so much for watching Katie Chats. If you like the show, please subscribe. And if you're curious to know what I'm doing when I'm not interviewing, please click here. I'm also an actress and recently produced my first short film and would love for you to check out the trailer. Thank you.